What's up guys, Mitchell Watts, Town & Country TV. And today, before we get started on this epic little video, I wanna tell you something. We're actually going to give away this GoPro Hero 7. Features hyper smooth stabilization, so that way you can actually make car review videos on your own. If you want to win this GoPro Hero camera, it's real simple. Hit the subscribe button and turn on notification bells uh, so that we don't miss any other videos. But follow the link down in the description after you've subscribed for your chance to win this GoPro Hero 7. All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the video. So before we get actually into the video itself, I do want to let you know, if this is your first time here, um, I work at Town & Country Ford, a Ford dealer. So this is going to be a totally biased video towards the Ford. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that out there, but I'm not just going to sit here and bash and shame the Chevrolet. I'm actually going to point out a couple of differences and let you make the difference in the decision on your own. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at the outside first. We're going to wrap it up with some stuff on the inside, and uh, we can even talk about the engine as well and there towards the end of the video. So as far as the front end is concerned, this particular body style came out in 2018. It was a mid-cycle refresh or a mid-cycle update. Um, and what they basically did is they gave it a new front end, a new rear end, new powertrain options, that kind of a thing. What you're looking at here is an XLT F-150. So this is going to be a middle of the ground uh, edition. This is the most popular seller of the F-150 by far when you take out fleet vehicles and, you know, things like that. Uh, but what you'll notice, this truck is uh, actually Leadfoot is the name of the color. And it actually comes with a painted magnet. Magnetic is the name of the color in the grill, which looks really nice on this particular trim level. But if you look at a red one or you look at a white one, that gray grill in contrast to the rest of the F-150 does look a little different. It's nice to see that the Chevrolet actually has a color keyed front grille no matter what you're looking at. So that is kind of a nice thing. I will tell you though, as far as the front end is concerned, that's about where it stops. To me, this front end looks like it's a little bit over-engineered. And let me show you what I mean by that. I actually like the way that the grill looks, as I've already mentioned. But look at this headlight. This headlight looks like it's three separate pieces, right? No, no, it's one solid, massive piece that weaves in and out. And it just looks like there's so much going on as far as that's concerned. Now, you also look at the front end of the truck. I, I don't, I know what they're trying to do here. They're allowing air to pass through so that way it creates a specific type of wind turbulence they have help with the aerodynamics. By the way, the Ford F-150 has got that same thing and it has had it since 2015. You can see we've got the, our little vent is located here and it spits it out in almost the exact same location, which is going to be right here. It does the exact same principle, but I would argue that Chevrolet's option is a lot more ugly. Um, now, as you can see, the, the other problem that I have with this is, you know, if you follow our channel, we love custom trucks. We love custom trucks, lifted, you know, custom bumpers, ADD bumpers. I love that company. I love what they're doing. I don't know how in the world you're going to fit a custom bumper to this truck when you've got this funky little fin going on. I almost think you'd have to re-engineer this entire side piece. Um, the biggest problem on me for this front end it's going to be this particular side piece. Now, before we get too far into this video, I do want to let you know that these two trucks are almost identical in price. I think their difference is about $1,400 worth of equipment, uh, but some of the features that are between them that are different, both of them have no sunroof. Uh, both of them are cloth vehicles from the factory. Now, the, the XLT F-150, we've actually added leather after the fact, but I'm not accounting for that in the price. So you're looking at about a $54,000 MSRP, roughly about a $52,000 MSRP, but it comes out to be $1,400 difference between the two trucks. Now, you'll also notice that the F-150 also picks up a set of 20-inch wheels, whereas this one comes with 18s. Now, the reason this one has 18s is because Southern Comfort ordered it with 18s because they're going to lift it. They're going to put the six inch lift the 35 inch tires all that kind of stuff on this truck uh but uh that it just know that with only fourteen hundred dollars you don't get a set of for fifty two thousand dollars you don't get a set of 20 inch wheels blows my mind and in, in just in my opinion now the other thing that you <laughs> 
that's another guy that works with me. He's a, he's a nut. But anyway, so uh, you have a very significantly similar price uh, as far as the, the vehicles are concerned. Now, another thing that you'll notice, the F-150 has things like blind spot information system built into that price, and that's not included on this particular truck. Now, this one also happens to have a couple other features like the push button start and some things like that. You know what? Let's come on to the inside here in just a few minutes. Let's finish our walk around on the outside of the truck. You'll notice that the side of the truck, I actually really like the way the side profile of the truck looks. I think they did a good job with that. Now, one thing that I do want to let you know, um, and everybody remembers those uh, Chevrolet commercials where they bashed Ford Motor Company for coming out with an aluminum truck, and um, and they were like, you know, aluminum can't be as strong as steel on a truck, and it's just funny to me that even though this truck is not aluminum all the way around, guess what? There's a lot of pieces on this particular truck that have aluminum on it. It kind of makes Chevrolet feel like some hypocrites. Um, but then again, they do have a couple of components that are steel, uh, whereas the Ford body is completely military-grade aluminum alloy body. On the back of the truck, you'll notice that they've got a different style of a bumper. You actually have... The, uh, bigger footsteps. Uh, so from uh, from my sources, Mr. Bobby Coleman himself said that uh, they made these openings bigger so people with steel toe boots can actually get their boot in there to get into the bed of the truck. Um, another nice thing about the Chevrolet, if you haven't watched our other video, um, is that you do have a soft open tailgate that doesn't soft open based on where this thing's parked. I don't know why that is, but um, and I don't know if you can hear that. Let's listen to the F-150. Sounds a little more solid to me. I mean, once again, I'm biased. I know it. I'm not trying to hide it, uh, but it does sound a little different. And one of the things I like to think of is that quality can be, you can tell quality by the way the fit and the finish of when, you know, a door shuts or a door opens or a, a bed tailgate opens, that kind of a thing. Now, as far as the, I keep forgetting that this thing's not going to open for me. Uh, so as far as getting into the bed of the truck, if you haven't watched our other video, do that. Uh, but it, you still have the ability to get into the bed of the truck. There's no issues there. One of the things that I did not talk about in that video is that the tailgate actually does not come metal. It comes plastic. And so I would like to know how that plastic is going to hold up over a long lifetime of the vehicle, whereas the Ford F-150, it still has the military-grade aluminum alloy uh, on the, the, the actual tailgate as well. A couple of other things that I want to talk about. Uh, you do have LED lighting system in the truck, which is really nice. However, that they didn't put a switch for that LED lighting. They didn't put it in the bed of the truck. So if you're in the bed of the truck like I am, I got to get down, get out, go to the bed of the truck, the cab of the truck, turn it on, and then get back into the bed of the truck. It just seems like a whole lot of work when they could have just put a switch right here. One of the things I do like about the Chevrolet is you do have the household outlet plug actually in the bed of the truck, which is really, really nice. So that gives this truck has two household outlets, one here, one in the front seat. Now, the F-150 has two of them as well, but they happen to be in the front seat and in the back of the seat. So I kind of wish that the, the Ford F-150 would just have a total of three of them and just put an additional one in the bed of the truck. But, you know, there you go. Now, we've already talked about how do you get in the bed of the truck on the Chevrolet. Let's talk about how you get, and you notice that this one did not have a soft open. Uh, you have to get the Lariat to get the soft open uh, tailgate. But you do have, instead of the steps in the bumper, you do have the actual tailgate step. And I would argue, um, and you can argue with me if you want, you can light us up in the comments. I'm okay with that. But I would argue that for an elderly person or someone that's a little bit older, that this is going to be the better option to get in and out of the truck. And the reason is because you have a very big, definitive, clear handle to hold. And you also have this drops down a little bit lower, or at least it feels like it to get in and out of the truck. But you actually have a higher point that you can pull on. You can use your arms to help you get into the bed of the truck. Whereas that one's a little bit lower you have to use all of your lower body strength to get in before we move on to the next topic let's talk a little bit about towing the new chevrolet silverado does up to 11,900 pounds in total towing if it's properly equipped the ford f-150 does over 13,000 pounds of towing when properly equipped so a pretty significant difference there uh, which is probably it's kind of shocking to me because usually when chevrolet or ford come out with the next latest and greatest and it's a total overhaul Usually they try and one up each other, you know, so I'm, I'm shocked that Chevrolet did not try and go for 13,300 pounds, whereas the Ford does 13,200. But nonetheless, that's okay. If they want to come out with a newer truck and doesn't tow as much, 
once again, hashtag biased. <laughs> As we jump onto the inside of the Ford F-150, you'll notice this particular truck, it's an XLT, sport appearance package, which means it comes with the center console shifter. A very neat thing that you need to notice is that the Chevrolet does not offer a center console shifter on any of their Silverados, which is blows my mind. The fact that you can get a mid-level F-150 with the center console shifter. Once you've driven one with it, it's hard to go without it. And uh, what I mean by that is I'm constantly just resting my hand on that center console shifter while I'm driving down the road. Now this particular truck, we've actually added premium catskin leather seats to it. And so uh, that, that is not included when we had talked about our MSRP to MSRP price difference, but it's something nice to know. You also have the nice, they both have eight inch touch screens they both have heated seats um, the biggest difference that you'll see on the inside is that uh, the center console shifter and then also the f-150 xlt does not have push button start you have to jump up to the lariat to get that now let's talk about the back seats of the trucks as you can see the f-150 has got a significant amount of room in fact you can raise it up and you can do just about anything you want to with this area um, please don't include an <laughs> inappropriate sexual joke there but you do have the ability <laughs> to do anything you want to in that nice load flat floor including keeping all of your your stuff there if you wanted to you also have the ability to store some stuff under the seat now as you come over to the chevrolet um, and you also i wanted to point out to you i forgot to mention this uh that both of these f uh both of these vehicles that driver's front seat is all the way back so you can kind of get an idea of exactly how much leg room each truck has back and forth let's jump on to this side so we can show you the exact same thing you know what you're looking at and knowing what you're comparing it to so this particular truck same thing seats all the way back and as you can see a pretty significant difference as far as leg room in the back seat of that new silverado uh, versus the f-150 the similar kind of concept the seat folds up i would uh, argue that the silver the f-150 seat actually Actually folds even more so out of the way than the F1 than the Silverado does but it, you know not bad not bad the main thing that I don't like is the fact that they put a specific divider in here so that way if you needed that little extra little little bit of cargo room you don't have the ability to use it you can only use it for what you want and that's to put stuff in there flop the seat down and then you know you can kind of hide it that way as we come onto the front side of the Silverado, you can see the interior is also redesigned. Everything has got much more rounded curves to it. And that, for that regard, it lo looks a lot more um, gentle to the eyes, I guess you could say. Um, if you, I, I kind of think the F-150 interior looks a little bit more masculine than, than the Silverado does. Uh, but you know what, to each as your own. You do have dual climate control system on, the, uh, on this version of the Silverado anyway. And I like the placement of the actual USB ports and then you have your uh, trailer brake controller, that kind of a thing. You have the heated seats on both sides as well. And uh, once again, I mentioned no center console shifter. To me, that would be a deal breaker. Um, so that's just something to think about. You also have a significant difference in size as far as the, uh, um, the center console is concerned. On the F-150, you can fit two full-size laptops into there, and it's also a full hanging file folder system, which it looks like Silverado did the same thing, but it's width-wise where Ford is able to do it from front to back. That's how much bigger that center console shifter is. And lastly, let's talk about the engines themselves. This one has the 5.0, and this one has another engine. In fact, we're going to put the specs of both of these particular engines right there on the screen, so if you have any questions, please let us know. And uh, last, I'm going to call Mr. Bobby Coleman back in here to say a huge thanks to him and Southern Comfort Automotive Performance they're located in Trustful, and as you guys know, we're a dealer of theirs, and we love their products, love those people. Uh, so huge thanks to them for sh sharing the Silverado with us, and uh, we just appreciate the opportunity to show you guys this video. As I've already mentioned, you want to win that GoPro, hit the link in the description right after you've subscribed to our channel. And if you have any questions about either one of these trucks, leave those comments down in the comments section below. Thank you so much for watching this video, and have a great day.